Exchange rates. An exchange rate is the price at which one currency exchanges for another. Bilateral rates are the specific value of one currency in terms of another, such as one US dollar exchanging for 1.1 euros. Average rates can be tracked by the use of an index, such as the US dollar index, or USDX, or the sterling trade weighted index. These track currency values against a basket of other currencies. Changes are weighted to reflect the relative importance of different currencies in terms of trade. So how are rates set? Well, that depends upon the system used. In a freely floating system, rates are determined by the forces of demand and supply operating in the foreign exchange market. The demand and supply of currencies originates from the need to pay for international transactions in local currencies. When consumers, firms or governments in one country buy another country's products or invest in their assets, they must exchange their currencies. The demand and supply of currencies ultimately comes from trade and investment flows. For example, rates are pushed up when demand for a national currency rises as their exports or investment opportunities become more popular abroad. Rates are pushed down when the reverse happens, and they import more from abroad or invest more in other countries. Relative interest rates, inflation rates, speculation and confidence levels also affect currency values. In contrast, a fixed system involves currencies being pegged by a country's central bank or through a currency board, as in the case of the Hong Kong Currency Board, which pegs the Hong Kong dollar to the US dollar. Under the post-war IMF system, currencies had a fixed value against the US dollar, which itself was pegged to gold, but this collapsed in 1971, leaving national currencies to float freely or be pegged or even abandoned as countries formed single currency zones, such as the Eurozone. A key advantage of a floating regime is the automatic adjustment of currencies in the face of a balance of payments disequilibrium. For example, trade deficits will lead to a currency depreciation, which then stimulates exports in the future. Trade surpluses are reduced as currencies appreciate and imports decline. Floating rates are also a shock absorber against external shocks. However, under a floating system, speculation may lead to considerable instability in the foreign exchange market, causing turbulence in the wider economy. So, fixing rates can help reduce instability as well as provide certainty to producers who can predict the prices of their exports and the costs of imported raw materials and are more likely to invest in capital. Hybrid systems involve elements of fixed and floating systems. So, what effect do changes in exchange rates have on an economy? Well, for a trading nation, the exchange rate is a critical economic variable. Initially, movements in currencies affect import and export prices. The extent of this depends on what is called currency pass-through, which is the effect of a currency change on specific prices. These can differ widely from industry to industry. Assuming some pass-through, exchange rates affect the demand for imports and exports, the full effect depending on the elasticity of demand for imports and exports. Given that exports are a key part of aggregate demand, exchange rates can affect national income with a weaker currency stimulating export sales, jobs and growth. However, the exchange rate also affects the supply side of the economy, with the weaker currency increasing import prices, leading to cost-push inflation. Conversely, while a stronger currency can reduce imported cost-push inflation, exports can suffer with lost jobs and slower growth. Economic prosperity depends on having an exchange rate system that helps achieve several economic objectives, including employment, growth, and a balance of payments.